show love to them three o'clock. No, I won't do that. <laughs> Thank you, members. Uh, we'll go to item 10 um, and welcome back um, David Rankin and uh, joined by Kate Cumber Patch, who's been working on this project uh, together with um, Alan Young. So, welcome. And um, the Mayor and the Deputy Mayor have indicated to me the moving of the recommendations. So, I'll put those. Uh, they, are on, they, are, they are moved and, and seconded, moved by the Mayor and the Deputy Mayor. And there, when you see them later, there are just some slight uh, refinements which you'll see in red. But we'll come to those shortly. Um, who would like to lead this? Kate will be. Kate, Jimin. <coughs> Kate, in your good hands. Thank you. Kia ora, Mr Chair, Mayor, Councillors. We're here today to represent the hearing panel's recommendation to change the use of 40 Anzac Street in Takapuna. This was presented to you in November last year, but the decision on the day was to defer to allow us to consult further with the local board on how this proposal could be progressed. I'll outline the discussions had between Panuku and the local board since this November decision. But first, some context. Takapuna is one of the metropolitan centres of Auckland and there is significant growth already underway supporting this. Council is investing $12.3 million in the streetscape and stormwater improvements along Hurstmere Road. And private sector development is underway. Internal refurbishment of the Shore City Mall by the new owners. There are currently four apartment buildings under construction, providing 209 apartments across them. There are also many apartments consented for in the area. These haven't started construction yet, but across them they'll provide an additional 300 plus apartments. All these apartments are providing residents within walking distance from the centre. In October 2015, Council approved Takapuna as one of the priority locations for Panuku to concentrate efforts on. Then in, two, in March 2016, the Auckland Development Committee endorsed the high-level project plan, which involved the sites shown in orange and red here. These included 40 Anzac Street, which is the largest orange site in the centre of Takapuna. The aim of the project, as stated in the high-level project plan, is to support the growth of this metropolitan centre and unlock the potential of Takapuna <laughs> for urban revitalisation and housing. <coughs> Dating back to 2010, there are several plans for Takapuna that have created a strong and well-documented base for us to work from. The only change from these has been the adoption of the unitary plan, which is where we have needed to refresh some aspects of these plans to go forward with. The vision of the Unlock Takapuna project was stated in the Takapuna Centre Plan 2014, which was based on the Takapuna Strategic Framework Plan 2010. The vision is to make the most of Takapuna's lake and seaside location to create a safe, accessible and vibrant town centre orientated around pedestrians and cyclists. During 2016 and early 2017, we went through this vision with key stakeholders and discussed how the project goals and objectives could realise this vision. This stakeholder engagement was all done in collaboration with the local board and is outlined in detail in attachment C. This is 40 Anzac Street currently. The site is a surface car park of 250 car parks. The site is not legally or zoned as open space. It is a fee simple title for the purposes of parking. These are all images from Council's Takapuna Centre Plan 2014. This is where the work done prior to Panuka being involved, which is where we started on for our project. Approving the change of use of 40 Anzac Street and not having car parking on the central site opens it up to be developed to create a number of things. A new town square allowing all weather events which could, ac which could accommodate market activity and the Anzac Memorial which is currently on private land. New office, retail, food and beverage and homes that will activate and revitalise the centre by bringing more people to it. Upgraded bus facilities along Lake Road. Streetscape improvements along Huron and Northcroft streets to the new Gasometer car park. <coughs> new improved connections through to the new improved Hursme Road. A safer, more accessible Potters Park which can open up onto Anzac Street and connect better with the new and existing public realm network. 
and an improved service lane along the back of 40 Anzac Street. This could be a catalyst for the properties backing onto the service lane to refurbish the backs of their buildings or redevelop entirely. These are images from the Unlocked Hikapuna Framework Plan 2017. This framework plan was published in August 2017 following a lot of stakeholder engagement. It was used as supporting documentation to the consultation on the change of use of 40 Anzac Street. These designs shown in the framework plan were the bulk and locations done to update the potential of the site following the unitary plan being adopted. These plans were used during the stakeholder engagement as a starter for conversations. During engagement, it was clear that the community wanted the square on 40 Anzac Street over the original idea of it being on the council-owned Hursme Road properties. This was depicted in the framework plan, plan by showing various options, including the one shown in the top right of the slide, which shows a possible town square location in the middle of 40 Anzac Street. This priority for a town square on 40 Anzac Street was also made clear to the hearing panel and has been included as one of its conditions for recommending the change of use to be approved. To be able to realise this vision, first we needed to sort out the car parking. We've worked closely on this with Auckland Transport. The strategy is to agglomerate parking into one cost-effective structure on the gasometer site just down the road. We would build a minimum of 400 car spaces, which replaces what is, ca replaces what is currently available across the two main parking sites in the Unlocked Takapuna project, these being 40 Anzac Street and the Kosomata uh, site shown here in red. This car park could have up to 550 car spaces, which will future-proof it for the 30-year forecasted need for Takapuna. Any number of car parking over 400 spaces built within this facility would be a net increase to the current provision of parking in Takapuna, noting that currently council owns and manages approximately 2,300 on and off street parking in Takapuna. <coughs> the new Gasometer car park will work in conjunction with the existing <coughs> Kalani Street car park to create an environment ideal for shoppers and visitors to Takapuna Town Centre. These car parks are both 200 metres from either end of Hursme Road, which is the main retail strip of Takapuna. Both these car parks are located at either end of the town centre and there is only 700 metres walking distance between them, meaning that everywhere in Takapuna is easily accessible. The signage at the entrances of the town centre directing visitors and shoppers to these car parks, the congestion in the centre will decrease. People won't be driving around try trying to find a spot to park. Another aspect to enable this vision to be realised was that the change of use of 40 Anzac Street needed to be consulted on, and this now needs to be approved by this committee. This consultation requirement is a result of the property being purchased by a special rate to property owners. Consultation was done August to September 2017, and attachment C outlines how the consultation was communicated. We ensured that all property owners and contributors to the Takapuna Off Street Car Park Reserve Fund were reached as well as interested stakeholders and the wider public. The consultation asked people if they supported the proposal as shown here on the slide, to change 40 Anzac Street from a surface car park to an area of mixed development, and we stated that this would involve the sale and subsequent development of parts of the site. No actual design proposals have been done, only indicative images of the possibilities as shown on the previous slides. We have always envisaged doing site planning with the community particularly in where and how town, town square would fit into the centre. Following the consultation, the hearing panel received all 2,061 submissions. Hearings were held in early October with 33 people speaking. At public deliberations, the hearing panel recommended that committee approve the change of use with these conditions. These conditions were placed on the site as they were the greatest concerns raised by submitters. We came to this committee seeking approval for this recommendation in November 2017 and the de decision was deferred to allow us to consult with the local board on how the proposal to change the use of 40 Anzac Street could proceed. We worked with the local board during December and February discussing the key considerations of both parties. The main point of contention is the location and quantum of public parking to be provided in Takapuna. The local board are not in favour of our proposal to have the car parking in one facility on the Gasometer site. They're seeking two car parking buildings, one on both sites, for 400 plus car spaces each. This is both, cost sorry, this is both costly and results in an oversupply of car parking. Having the car parking on 40 Anzac Street is, is not conducive to the vision of a pedestrian friendly centre. 
Another main discussion point has been the community engagement <coughs> going forward to determine the best location, layout, design for the public realm spaces, including a new town square for Takapuna community, and how the development on the site will relate to these spaces. On this, we agree that we will do this collaboratively using both the skills of Panuku and the local board to reach the best outcome. We're here today for an approval to change the use of 40 Anzac Street as recommended by the hearing panel. This will allow us to realise the vision and create a vibrant, pedestrian-friendly town centre for future, future generations to come. The concept of change is a challenging aspect, so we'll go on this journey with the local board and the community and work together on the best outcome. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Kate. Well Anything further to add, Alan or David? No, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Members, it's moved and seconded. I will take questions to begin with. Are there questions? Councillor Casey. Yeah, can you talk about the consultation after the last meeting that we had? Because um, I might be wrong. I thought you were going to come back with a compromise. And what we've heard from the local board today was it's, it's, it's either or. There's nothing in the middle. Can you talk about that? Was I, was I wrong in that assumption? We went back to the local board. It was to uh, discuss how the proposal could proceed. Yeah. Um, when we started those discussions in December, it was very clear that the main point was the car parking um, and where the location and, and how many car parks were to be provided. So we've done the analysis, and that's what we went back to the local board with in February. Um, and it's the, the cost of the car parking to provide um, within two facilities is not uh, supported by Panuku or Auckland Transport on that, and having it on the uh, Anzac Street site is not, as I said, it doesn't um, go with the proposal of a pedestrian-friendly environment. So then I was wrong that you were going to look for a compromise. Well, we, <clears throat> I think, I think um, what Kate is saying is we, uh, we were going to, we, the objective was to try and get an agreement, mm -hmm. and um, I think, as you heard from the chair, there's probably potential agreement on most things, yeah. um, certainly that meets the community feedback and most of the issues raised by the local board. But the sticking point, <coughs> which despite a lot of discussion, um, we've not reached agreement on, is um, whether we have two parking structures and how they're paid for. So in simple terms, as Kate said, um, the, the Panuku concept is involving moving all the parking onto one site, <coughs> in fact slightly increasing it and building a building, and on that basis we and you, the governing body, were prepared to fund a $25 million parking building on the gasometer site, which is, as you know is not happening very much in the region. Um, the local board's position as articulated at the meetings with us and the resolution is that they want substantial parking, public parking on Anzac Street which has either got to be underground or a structure at considerable cost, plus a parking building on gasometer. So despite good intentions on both parties, and courteous, as, as the chairman said, there were no personality issues, it was a courteous set of discussions, we weren't able to reach agreement on that point. <coughs> and we don't believe the council will ever fund two parking buildings in that location, especially when Auckland Transport don't support it, there are no budgets for it, and in addition, um, Panuku, for urban design reasons, doesn't support retaining significant parking right in the town centre. Which is a nice segue into my next question, which was, I think the chairman said he was going to ask you to address the, the discrepancy in the figures that are in the report with regard to the presentation from the board chair. Which discrepancy? So, Kate, that was... Um, there were a number paragraph of things 15. that were raised, I'm sure. In paragraph oh, You may have um, taken note of some of the things Nine that story, were four put by the board about? chair. That particular point related 52. to... Paragraph 53. 53 and 15. The cost. Yeah. The, the cost of um, a, a structure, a car park above ground uh, on Anzac. Paragraph 53, I think, was the question I was asking of uh, Grant Gillen. It is too. Thank you. So point 53 follows through to uh, attachment B. Looking at that one, the cost of the car parking for Anzac being 30 million, with gasometer being 25 million, being a total of 55 million. 
estimated sales, which are broad figures just for a high level analysis, looks at what would be left within the sites following those two car parks. With a possible uh, just under 26 million, that leaves uh, an additional budget requirement of uh, 20, just over 29 million for car parking, and that's not including any public realm investment needed. So just to clarify, an additional 29 million? For that option too, yes. Okay, Councillor Casey? Uh, paragraph 15. Okay. 15. Yes, that, uh, so point 15 uh, goes through to, it's the same, so the, the cost of 61 million is adding in the estimated cost of public realm of 6 million, so that's 55 million for car parking and another 6 million for public realm, which is Town Square, connections across Anzac Street and through Hurstmere Road. Um, and your response to the board chair who said that they never said that? <laughs> Why is it nine levels? Being nine levels. Nine levels, so the site itself, uh, you, to, to get to 400 car parks and to have something on the ground floor to enable um, parking to not be over the ground floor adjacent to Potter's Park, you'd need nine storeys to get to 400 plus cars within that um, area of the site. Um, where the local board had talked about the southern part of the site, that um, my recollection that didn't come up in the meetings, I'm not sure where um, that point came from, from uh, a significant building, car parking building on the southern part of the site would be conflicting with the Lake Road bus facilities. Uh, so transport uh, advice has been that any significant amount of cars that did come onto that site would need to come in from the Anzac Street side of the uh, Fort Anzac, which is where um, a car park building, if it was on that site, would have to be uh, next to Potter's Park. Can we just, um, a lot of people here don't know the access points, so that is an important point. Can you just describe in the southern section. Perhaps put that yeah, um, okay, picture back on of the current site, Mr Chairman, that would be helpful, I think, too. So uh, Auckland Transport are saying you cannot put a vehicle crossing for access to a car park right through the transport centre area? They haven't said that explicit, explicitly. It's been from transport advice, transport planning advice. Um, sorry, I get to the... The aerial. That one. Um, this is the aerial. That one. Yeah. Um, Can we point to that area, please? So this is where the uh, public transport facilities are. There are three to four bus stops along here. There's a um, service lane entrance from here, which comes in, it's one, one way along there. But there would be, if this was the main entrance for... Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, providing 400-plus car park entry at this point where there's a significant amount of um, bus boardings and bus departures every day uh, would be a conflict. So it wasn't explicit from Auckland Transport that that would, would be a complete no, but transport planning advice has been that any significant number of cars coming onto the site would need to come in at this section. Thank you. What, what does a partial no look like? So the yes or no, what's a partial no? You said it wasn't <laughs> an explicit no, so what's a partial no? Is I think what she meant is the advice no came from transport planners rather than technically Auckland Transport. But there would be no doubt Auckland Transport would agree with that view because if you know the site, which I do pretty well, um, it would be completely incompatible with um, significant bus movements to have that as the location for a 400 space car park and all the in, <coughs> in and out there in that location directly in conflict with what's pretty high volume of bus services which is projected to increase. Thank you. Councillor Wayne Walker. Cool. Um, I've got a few questions, Mr Chair, and I have alerted uh, Panuku oh, to, those, those. to those questions. Can we just go through those questions? Uh, do you have those in front of you? And if you could respond to those questions. Thank you, Councillor Walker, for 
putting those uh, forward earlier? Um, so first question about uh, a 3,000 square metre multi-level parking site being eight to nine storeys, um, I think I've answered that, but within that area of the site, that's 2,500 square metres um, to allow for 400 plus cars, um, some area on the ground floor, um, for something other than cars, then you would need a nine storey to get to that level. Okay, uh, just uh, to respond here, Mr Chair, uh, if I can just um, speak to that. Well, no, I think you can speak to it, and, but you're taking your speaking turn. How about we uh, answer your questions, and then you can speak to it? I've got a further query around that okay. answer. What I'd Mr. like Chair. is, Kate, to go through your questions, which you have uh, sent through, and then we'll give you the opportunity to ask supplementary. So if we can go through them all, Kate. Um, your second question, uh, parking being set back from the road and Potters Park for active edges, um, it can. And, and hence why we get to eight storeys for, um, for a parking building there. Um, your third question, no allowance being made for sale of air rights above the car parking building. The zoning on 40 Anzac Street allows a maximum level of nine, maximum height of nine storeys, where there would then therefore be no air rights available for um, further sale. Uh, your fourth question, uh, the option of car parking on 40 Anzac Street and substitution for a parking building on the Gasometer site not being considered. It had been considered. Um, this is not pedestrian friendly. It brings a significant amount of cars uh, into the middle of the site, into the middle of the centre, sorry. Uh, independent valuation advice uh, on the values assumed in the report. Uh, we have had uh, current market values uh, land rate assessments for Takapuna and that's where the uh, high level estimates have been based from. <coughs> we asked about uh, independent research being done on customer trips to Takapuna, um, the mode of travel, what do uh, customers do in Takapuna, how long do they stay, how do they visit other locations that they may visit within Takapuna. This was all work done uh, which was included with an Auckland Transport's analysis for them to determine the number of car parks required for Takapuna, which is where the replacement need of 400 cars with a future proof ability of 350 with, uh, within the next 30 years within Takapuna Centre has come from. Independent valuation advice um, answered as previous. And you've asked if Panuku have received any expressions of Expressions of interest to purchase all of or part of 40 Anzac Street? Uh, no, not formally. No. There is um, <coughs> people have always, are always interested in what Panuku has um, got underway, but there has been no expressions of interest received for that site, um, and therefore no no price to to give. Thank you. Can you um, can I lay you two supplementaries? Because I've got a quite a list of others that want to ask questions. Sure. Uh, first of all, in terms of the size and height of a parking building, it would be very helpful to have some form of breakdown. And the rationale behind that is my discussion with um, some architectural people who tell me that at a, a size of 25 square metres per car park, which I think is industry <coughs> standard, and some allowance for ramps that yeah. you could no, have a no, four-level no. car park, certainly very close to it, and accommodate close to 400 parks. So that's a fundamental question that I am at issue with. If the answer is that you could have a four-level car park, then what follows from that is you've got five levels <coughs> of value in terms of air rights and you substantially start changing the equation. So I have a, a real concern around the information that we're getting. I'd really like to see things peer reviewed. These are fundamental questions for me. There are also issues that I have around the valuations based on recent sales, certainly within the last five months in the area. 
Okay. So I want to put those concerns on the table. The other issue that I have, which is fundamental, that goes to pedestrian friendliness, um, access, cycling and the like, and that is, I think, the almost self-evident no, um, response that the location that most people would want to go to, to park a bike, um, to uh, park in any form of um, uh, vehicle, and that could include a shared vehicle, would be the Anzac site, not the gasometer site. And frankly, the lack of any real analysis that I see going forward around those requirements into the future. I have a real concern around that, Mr Chair, as it goes to the decision that we're making today. Thank you. Councillor Simpson. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. I, I want to co concentrate on parking, because I think that's probably a, a key issue. Can you just confirm, you said it really quickly, and I was just trying to write everything down. Can you confirm the number of on-street car parks in Takapuna, <coughs> and how does it compare to other centres of the same type? So, in other words, on the on-street car parking, are we um, the same, more or less, than other places? of the same <coughs> planning delegation <coughs> question. Within Takapuna, of, there's a total of 2,300 car parks which are owned and managed uh, by Auckland Council. Of those, 1,400 are street parking and the other 900 are off street parking. I don't have to hand the, uh, all the details of other centres and then the quantum of parking within those centres. Um, but that's uh, uh, for the analysis that was all done for the analysis uh, for what is needed for Takapuna um, and the, the current form of Takapuna. Okay, my second question is, can you can just confirm the distance, because yeah, another one of the arguments that I heard this morning was the distance people had to walk from uh, the car parks to where they want to go. So you just had a map up there, the distance. Is it, was it that no one has to walk any further than 750 metres? Was that correct? No. It's 200 metres. Mm. You're walking from car park to car park. Uh, Technology sees it. <laughs> <laughs> Or 250 metres, I just... So from um, the entrance... Yeah, was it 250 metres? Should have put my glasses on. So from from here to the start of Hurstmere Road is 200 metres. Both sides, Kate. So both can oh. So from here to here, which is the start of Hurstmere Road, that's a 200 metre walking distance. Mm -hmm. Same with the Kalani Street car park, which is... Um, owned and managed uh, by Regional Facilities Auckland within Council. So from here to the other end of Hurstmere Road is 200 metres. Right. From here... Hold on, which side? Yep. Oh, sorry. Yep. I'll start here. So from here and then along Hurstmere Road and into Kalani Street, um, along Hurstmere Road and into Kalani Street is a total of 700 metres. So the longest you'd walk would be 700 metres if you started it, you wanted to go completely at the go opposite end London. of where you why parked. You you yes. park at Kalani gotcha, Street. thank you. Um, and if, if a second car park, the local board is keen for, a, for even more parking, a second car park. Did you discuss with them potentially what um, their contribution could be? for that? Like, would it be their main Ollie, or would it be their main project? Did you discuss that at all? Uh, we didn't get into the details of um, whether the local board would would fund a second okay. car park. Um, and, and if the car, second car park was suggested, can you have you done a cost analysis of what it would cost per car parking space to service? Uh, we haven't analysed for the two car parks because it's a um, increased requirement over what Auckland Transport C is needed for Takapuna. Um, the current parking rates within Takapuna uh, equate to a $10.50 a day allowance or a parking, parking charge to, char to park there all day. Um, to fund two car parks, whilst we haven't done the detailed analysis, it would be a significant um, a significant increase. And my final question, sorry, my last bit. If the gasometer car park was built and the concern I'm hearing is it could be all day car parking for commuters as opposed to 
a, um, a car park that people could, you know, use to go to the, the shops or cafes or restaurants or whatever. The level of detail about whether some could be short-term car parking or left designated for short-term parking, has that been looked at at all? Or is it only per day? Or, you know, we're looking at it as a... I mean, that was the argument. The argument is you're, you're taking away, you know, to be able to park for two or three hours to go to the shops as opposed to people who come in there and they use it as a park and ride, potentially. So how can we... Have you looked at how could we potentially keep some car parks for those who wanted to use them for shopping? Yes, the priority from Auckland Transport, and that goes through to their adopted um, plan from 2015, is that uh, the priority is for short-stay car parking, not it commuter is. parking. Fantastic. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Watson. Uh, th thank you, Mr Chair. Um, my question is to do with the car parking research that, that um, has a reasonably prominent part in, in your report. Um, in the first instance, this... Uh, significant amount of research um, that, that we've been told has occurred. Was that applied specifically to Takapuna um, as opposed to uh, a more generalised research into town centres per se? Uh, a combination of, of both. So uh, research was looked at um, when Auckland Transport were doing the analysis of what was needed for the centre. Um, in terms of uh, the environment and what, it, and what it can create within Takapuna to have uh, car parking um, on the peripheries of town and to create walking environments that is um, research or mainly not research as such but um, advice from traffic and parking consultants and retail groups that, um, that creates an environment for the centre. I guess, Mr Chairman, my, my concern is, is the, the rather um, unusual function that uh, Takapuna serves for the North Shore that's quite different from other town centres uh, around Auckland. And I, I think uh, in terms of, of, of the shopping, which we've, we've certainly heard from the, from the, the businesses, but also as a, the civic centre of the North Shore and the fact that there's this <laughs> glorious beach that uh, <coughs> people like to come mm. from quite a wide catchment. So, you know, historically... Takapuna attracts people from, from all over the shore, Northcote, Birkdale, um, you know, up the bays, everywhere, which, which is different from other areas, hence the greater demand of, of, of parking. So was that multi-purpose, if you like, function taken into account in this research and applied to Takapuna rather than the notion that, you know, a town centre out in Manukau somewhere where people will be willing to drive to the, the fringe and then walk in? Is that the sort of things that was factored into the research? The um, park on Tamaki Drive. In the high-level project plan, there are a number of sites which were around Takapuna and included three main sites down on the Strand and Channel View Road. These weren't included within the actual Takapuna Unlock project. They provide the beach parking. There's at least 300, approximately 300 car parks that are managed and owned by Auckland Coun Council, which are down in that uh, beach area. Um, so down here there's three large council sites for car parking and overall, sorry everybody, um, and these, um, these service the beach. My final question Mr Chair, and, and um, in, in all of this, um, of course uh, Shore City provides <coughs> a lot of car parking, three hours free, free car parking, um, has there been any sort of scenario um, modelling there, if, if there was to be some sort of change of use there, what would it happen to that whole parking dynamic in Takapuna, given that it's privately owned and that, you know, there, there could well be some future, given its attractiveness of something to happen with the parking there. Is, is that being considered at all in any of this planning? Um, at this stage, no, it's a, um, the private parking um, for the mall. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chair. Councillor Newman. Yeah, um, my question, I guess, um, goes to the reliance and the recommendations on the um, use of the open space provision policy uh, as guidelines for the civic square. As I understand it, there is a minimum requirement for 3,000 square metres, but the local board uh, is concerned about that because that minimum requirement is significantly less than the open space available at that particular site at the moment. 
has, um, you're not appearing to provide any sort of um, guarantee of open space requirement beyond reliance of that policy, or are you more willing to get a bit harder in terms of the minimum space that you will provide as a condition of the development? So Town Square required is required through the conditions from the hearing panel. In terms of its specific size, uh, we haven't set that in stone at this point because there is uh, community engagement to be done to determine what the best uh, size, as well as other aspects, but the best size of a town square for Takapuna would be. I think there's also a very big difference, Councillor, between having a quality amenity square, which is what we're talking about here, versus what's described as open space there at the moment, which is car parks when they haven't got cars parked on them. There's a very big difference in cost and in quality, the whole experience of the public using it. I mean, one is a dedicated public amenity area. The other is uh, your ability to use a tarmac when there are cars not parked on the white lines in it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not a sort of apple with apple. <clears throat> okay, now with respect to recommendation B, Roman numeral two, investigate short stay public parking and surrounding streets. Uh, Mr Gillen alluded to the pressure that's um, already occurring at Hurstmere Road and I'd imagine that would be more pressure coming on Hurstmere Road, particularly with any upgrades subsequent. So, I mean, is there a risk here that one of the unintended consequences is that we end up um, really um, hurting Main Street strip shopping <coughs> um, when really that's probably the, the sort of retail, I mean if we're going to pick winners you'd want to, that, that sort of Main Street retailer to be doing well as opposed to the malls but there's a potential here that in fact Main Street gets hurt and the malls flourish because the malls have their private parking and what have you. I mean is that something that is considered at this point or is that beyond your remit because to me that seems to be one of the key issues that continues to, to arise is that um, at the end of the day Main Street um, is the one that will miss out because because c driving to shops is pretty fundamental to a retail experience un unfortunately because of the nature of dispersed dispersed Auckland and will continue to be so in Takapuna. Kate or David? It is the 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 distance from here to here is 200 metres. It is not seen as a significant risk. In terms of scale, the whole, the whole of Takapuna would fit inside Sylvia Park, and that's not including the parking around the outsides. So it is not, from here to here, being 700 metres is the length of Sylvia Park Mall. And if you go to Sylvia Park, you're at, you are parking even further away and walking the distance. So it's not... A significant risk. I think the bigger issue behind what your question is also, Councillor Newman, if we think about the big picture here, I mean, um, really what's at the heart of all this is what future strategy, exactly. looking out over the next 25 years, is going to mo most underwrite the probability of Takapuna being a successful centre. Do we think leaving this car park as it is, <clears throat> as it's been for the last 25 years, will um, provide a future or is the future of Takapuna and its main street more likely to be underwritten if we think ahead, which we should be given, this is a, re a metropolitan centre, is the future success much more likely to be underwritten by a good quality uh, mixed use development on this large site uh, injecting a significant number mm -hmm. of residents who will be there 24-7 um, a nice public amenity area um, which lines up with public feedback. I mean, I've known the centre for a very long time and that, that car park that we're talking about, if we're thinking about the vitality of the centre, that's been there all along and it hasn't stopped um, a lot of the commercial challenges of Takapuna gradually getting um, sharper and sharper as time's gone by. So to be a success, really successful centre again commercially, Takapuna has to change and it's difficult to see how you do that if that key central site is just left at single 
um, tarmac at grade car parking as it has been, you know, since I started going to that centre in 1980. <coughs> thank you. Mayor Goff. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr Chairman. I've got a, just two questions. Um, to me, one of the pivotal factors in the decision we make here uh, is the question of public realm, because we're not doing this just to create commercial developments, otherwise why would we be doing it at all? Though I acknowledge that we have to do it to create intensive housing, but one of the difficulties that I face, and maybe others, is I don't know where the square is going to go, or what size it is, Mm -hmm. and whether it's going to be somewhere suitable for, say, the Anzac Memorial, which is a local issue, and whether it's going to be suitable, maybe in conjunction with Potter's Park, to host a market. Can you throw any more light on any of those questions? Yeah, what, yeah. What, what are we looking at? I, I presume, you know, under your recommendations, you've got this will be a matter for further discussion with the board, but giving us a little more information at this stage would be helpful in the decision that we've got to make. Um, well, I think that's a good question, Your Worship, and um, I mean, look, one of the uh, lines we uh, are normally careful at Panuvi to tread here is the amount of detailed planning we do before there has been substantive engagement in, in a collaborative way with the local board, stakeholders, community groups on design. Um, what we have committed ourselves to is a public square that um, will be <clears throat> at the minimum size of what your own policy says is the appropriate size for the centre. That's a minimum commitment. The location of that is flexible. There have been ideas to have it in the centre. There have been ideas to have it closer down to the access way to Hurstmere Road, which we have recently augmented with site acquisitions to give us a much better, a bigger a space to work with. Um, the other parts of public realm we made commitments to are um, the quality of the um, public experience walking through to the main road, um, the quality of the public experience walking the 250 metres to the gasometer site, uh, the quality of the public square itself. These are all things which, as you can see, we've budgeted some millions for and are very open to working um, in this collaborative design process. And in fact, uh, Mayor, from our discussions with the local board, we found there was a lot of commonality in the aspirations about the, the sort of public amenity that might be wanted. We obviously know there's an issue to be solved with the market. We, we believe that's a solvable issue. Um, so, so I think the answer is we haven't done that detailed work because we've not wanted to start getting out pencils and designing this whole thing ourselves. Yeah. Um. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Chair. Through you, look, look, I understand all of that. We, we, somebody mentioned the minimum size before. Did, uh, what was the minimum size that this, this square would have to be? About 3,000. Under the uh, open space acquisition policy for a metropolitan centre, Kate? Yeah, one large civic space, so the size is a minimum of 3,000 square metres. Now, I heard that before. That's a, that's a very large that area. It is a very large area. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm looking at the, the document. I've read carefully the document that Heart of Takapuna has put in. And I see some tiny little spaces here which are described as tiny public courtyards. That's not what we're talking about, is it? No. With a square. No. So and you mentioned, for example, the um, <clears throat> lack of a more memorial area and, and, and suitable yeah. space to acknowledge that on, on public land at the moment. Now, that's an issue that came up with the local board. Clearly, that's significantly enabled by 3,000 square metres of a high quality public square. Okay. And that's just the square, we're not talking about Potter's Park? No. Okay, no. Now, what's the total square uh, metres of the, the site that's currently under car park? <coughs> uh, 8,000 square metres. So you're talking about 40% of this space being a public square. This is a, a large scale public square. Yeah. You could do a market in, maybe in conjunction, because you know I've been to the market there, it's quite a vibrant place, it's exciting, and I understand that people want to keep that. Is this the sort of area that you think you could run a market in, maybe not even once a week, but a couple of times? Well, it will be suitable for some sort of market. We, we, we've, we've got an issue which we acknowledge will, will, will need to be worked through of how the current market keeps working and what the best uh, location is for that. It's entirely conceivable that, that if you see this development, there will still be the ability for it to be there. That's yet to be uh, worked through. 
I think your question does illustrate a very good point which has been understated in the debate so far, which is any idea that this is maxing out a mixed-use development at the expense of public space, which is not there at the moment other than this car park, is a wrong impression. Okay. Your, your question illustrates exactly the fact that across the site uh, there is going to be a significant amount of public space. The difference will be that it will all be high quality public space designed for public use for public amenity. It's not just empty car park some of the week, which is what there is now. Thank you. Thank you. That's very helpful. One other question, uh, Mr Chairman, if I may. Um, the costs set out in this paper, uh, if we were to follow the local board proposal, you're standing by your cost that this would be a net additional impost on the council of $35 million that's unbudgeted. You're standing by that statement. That's the, the first part of the question. And the second part, look, I, I don't think any of us want to be unfair to, to Devonport Takapuna. Um, are we expecting them, in terms of some private development of the old car park, to carry a, a greater weight than, for example, um, uh, in other areas. I mean, we heard from Pam Ewer that you have to sell in order to get the funds to develop. Are we treating Devonport Takapuna in the same way, or are they being treated more harshly than other areas of, of Unlock? Yeah. So, so this goes to a debate that's running in parallel with this, as you'll know, around reinvestment, because currently the Council does not have a, a, a general policy to reinvest in Unlock areas. So normally, uh, if a car park is um, surplus in an unlock area at the moment or any other area, it's sold and it's returned to general, general funds. So um, we have managed, as you know, to put a business case together that um, we would be able to reinvest the full proceeds of the gasometer site and some surrounding uh, land in this $25 million car park building. There are not many uh, $25 million car park buildings being funded by the Council around the Auckland region. And the clear reason we were happy to champion in that with Auckland Transport was because we were freeing up this um, marvellous site um, in the centre of the town to make a real contribution to the, to the overall uh, growth strategy. Um, so Takapuna is being treated uh, it, it, this is really anticipating with a decision that's already been made, reinvestment, which we hope will be made available to other areas as well, like Pamuor. Okay. So will the gasometer site go ahead if the broader development doesn't go ahead? Uh, no, because the rationale for that, the whole business case was based on consolidating all the parking from the two sites and a bit more onto one site. So when you start getting back to building two structures or going underground, there is no budget for that, and it's not something we would champion or that Auckland Transport would. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you, Mayor Goff. <coughs> Councillor Stewart. Thank you. <coughs> yes, I've, I've just got a few concerns about this, and I think um, this is actually... Yes. We're waiting for this to, to be heard by the High Court, and I just wonder why the rush... It's, you know, we're only a couple of way, uh, months away from the High Court decision, and I just wonder why we can't wait for that. And, and if, if I could, I wouldn't mind having an amendment um, that the decision for this item is deferred until the matter of the High Court is heard. But I was just picking up on what you were talking about when you were talking about Sylvia Park, um, with the parking and that, that uh, you know, people, people have to, you know, park quite a distance away because it's a very long moor. But... That 250 or 700 metres is quite a long walk for anybody that's elderly or has a young you have young children have to carry the shopping. It's quite a long walk with the um, the type of weather that we we have in, in Auckland. Um, if if you're at a shopping mall, if you're at say Sylvia Park or or St Luke's or somewhere like that. Uh, you don't really have too far to walk once you've parked your car because then you can get under cover. And that, that's one of the points that I, I'd just sort of like to make. But I, I think you know, it's a little bit different. This is a little bit different to Pam Muir. I think Pam Muir is, is um, a place that really does need to have, um, you know, some, mon really some money spent. And I'm just concerned that 
you know, we, we start doing the takapunas, we'll be looking at the remuweras, we'll be looking at the how the villages and other little um, shopping centres. And so that's my concern. So I just wonder why, <coughs> why could you answer me why the rush that we have to do it now and we can't wait until we um, hear back in, sometime in May when it's gone through the High Court? Thank we, you. Um, now, to answer that question, of course, that's not <coughs> Panuku's role. Um, that's the role of our legal team. We need to be careful here because it is in the High Court currently. Christian, would you like to come up? And um, you've heard the question, Christian, and it's also an opportun opportunity for you to update as you can um, without prejudicing any party any information that has been received from the High Court on this matter. Thank you. Um, through the Chair, the matter is not yet, a hearing date hasn't yet been set. The Court indicated May, but we're yet to receive a hearing notice. So that might yet change. I understand that the applicant for judicial review is seeking to extend that out to provide further time for the preparation of their case. So until a hearing date is um, formal notice is provided, um, the best information we have at the moment is that the court has hearing time in May. Um, there's also an interlocutory application, a preliminary application, which is being heard on the 22nd of this month, which is seeking um, effectively a stay of the sale until the matter, uh, the substantive judicial review proceeding is heard. So that's currently where the court is at in terms of timing. A, a date may be firmed up for the substantive hearing after the 22nd of March hearing on the um, preliminary matter around a stay. Okay, can you just, um, many of the members aren't that familiar with uh, what the action is. Can you just briefly outline what the action is? And um, can you also really cover the subject matter before us, which is around a change of use, which has been recommended by the hearings panel? Uh, is the matter that, we're, that is before us today in any way uh, directly linked to the court action? Is there anything in your mind in the legal team that precludes us from making decisions on the change of use here today? There isn't anything that precludes this committee from making a decision on the change of use today. That issue was recently, it was raised on the weekend with the court um, and the court issued a minute yesterday which um, declined to make any orders preventing this committee um, from hearing the matter. The court noted that the avenue for the applicant for judicial re review to challenge today's decision is another judicial review proceeding. Mm -hmm. in, in terms of the matter that's... By the council. In, oh, see, no, we, oh, let, can we just let Christian proceed, please? Definitely. In terms of the matter that's currently before the, the court on judicial review, it's a challenge to council's decision to sell the property. Um, this matter, I guess, is, is, is another step towards sale, but the decision that is being challenged is the decision to sell the property. Which was, which was, made, month, which was made months ago when you approved the high-level project plan. Mm. Yes. You can't seek judicial review of this decision that's yet to be made, um, so the decision today is not um, directly being challenged in the High Court but I anticipate that de depending on which way the decision goes, there, there may be uh, a formal um, judicial review application lodged in respect of today's decision. Okay, thank you. Can I? I'll, I'll have to put you on the list, uh, Member Hannah, if you don't mind. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Walker, again, another question. Um, sure, the other question I've got just goes to um, parking, and, and Kate, you mentioned the um, I think 200, 209 apartments that are underway and then another uh, 300. So what, is the, what are the number of um, apartments that we could see in this uh, vicinity allowed under the uh, unitary plan? And I guess the related question, what's the provision for parking requirements for those apartments? And what might the pressure be for parking as a consequence? Kate? Yeah, the maximum um, uh, apartments within the site would depend on um, location, size of public space, um, and what actually is uh, residual for development. Uh, with the, th 
the unitary plan potential of the three sites, it was uh, an estimated 200 um, apartments. Um, this would obviously be uh, decreased with... Can I, just, can I just stop you there, Mike? Oh, well, I just... My, no, no, sorry, I hold, need to... No, please, Councillor Walker. It's you, not you need to be question. a lot better at letting the officers complete an answer. This would be a lot less, um, particularly if, if uh, 3,000 square metres of town square was within the site. Um, in terms of the car parking requirement for those residents, it would um, be a, a market driven and with its proximity to amenity and um, bus facilities and um, natural amenities with, within Takapuna, um, it may not be a significant amount of car parking required. Um, or sort. Um. Thank you, Kate. Councillor Lee. Through you, Mr Chair, my question was around the number of apartments we're going to see around Takapuna, particularly in the central area, not the site. You did say the site. The, no, I didn't say the site. The provision of parking as a consequence, which I can answer that. My understanding is it's zero under the uh, unity plan. And what might the pressure be for parking in the area? <coughs> okay. okay so point you... of order, uh, Councillor Walker just answered his own question. Yes. So therefore, the <laughs> officer does not need to say anything more. No, I didn't. Okay. Answer. I'm going to go to the next question, which is Councillor Lee. The okay. first, a, a legal question, um, and relates to the comments by Councillor Stewart. Um, oh. And you. It's been pointed out to us that the judicial review relates to a decision two years ago to sell this and a, a, and a bunch of other uh, parcels of land. Um, um, the, the decision we make today, um, would it be correct to say that if we were to decline a change of use, then in effect, the sale would be, in the meantime, at least aborted. Well, it would mean it would mean you um, can't change the uh, use. I, 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 I must not lawyer this one, please. Oh. <coughs> Sorry, I just I didn't hear that, Councillor Lee. What did you say? Mm. The, the the question is, if um, the committee today decides to change the legal use of the site, or let me put it this way, if we decide not to change the legal use of the site, would that not in effect abort, at least in the meantime, any sale? I think that would be the practical effect. So it's very, very germane to proceedings in the High Court, isn't it? The decision, the decision that is currently being challenged in the High Court is the decision of Council to sell the property. And yes, and it's, so this, this cannot change of use is very germane to that, is it not? It, it is germane. Thank yes. you. Now, the, my but question do you have to, to add on that, you were going to say something more. Oh. No, I think, I think it's been covered. It is germane. Yeah. Second okay. question, Councillor. Um, uh, can I ask Mr Rankin? Um, thank you. Um, in regard to the report um, and in comments made, there's quite uh, a strong emphasis on uh, the, the benefits or the disadvantages of car parking. And in uh, Clause 16 of the report, it states, it is a common misconception that town centres need a lot of car parking immediately adjacent to retail premises to be successful. A significant amount of research shows that, the car park, that car parking at the edge of a centre leads to shoppers staying longer and buying more. I, I have to say, uh, to be honest with you, I'm sceptical about this and I am concerned because uh, Panuku is very much involved in redevelopment and that redevelopment is not just residential, but also includes retail. Um, Sorry, silly. From all evidence, and even very recent evidence from precinct properties in Westfield and all the major uh, retail players, 
parking is very, very important, have been a key part of, of, of their consent applications. And so I, I, I wonder where you, where, you, where you get this information which completely conflicts with the empirical evidence of major retail operators in Auckland. This is a whole, this is quite radical. I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong, but it certainly is radical, so. Uh, um, well, Kate can give you perhaps some more detail on the uh, urban design and transport planning um, work that's behind that, because I think she actually covered it a bit earlier. But um, one of the key observations I make, Councillor, in terms of how radical all this is, is the need to not lose sight of the fact that the parking in Takapuna, in terms of this proposal, the public parking is not going to be reduced. What we're actually talking about is relocating it 250 metres away to the gasometer site. Now, I would freely concede, as I have to the local board, that moving the parking 250 metres is not going to be as convenient for a, a number of shoppers as having it where it is now. But um, it's hardly a radical uh, move like removing the parking or making it a kilometre away. It is a relatively modest relocation, um, but the total supply is the same. In fact, I think we're slightly increasing it as across the two sites. So um, I think that's important to bear in mind because there is an argument, an urban design argument, as I would call it, around whether it's a good idea to stuff town centres full of cars in the middle so everyone drives in and drives out and drives through, um, and the, the impact that has um, on trying to create a vibrant town centre where more people are going to live. But aside from that, we shouldn't forget that the amount of parking here is going to be not just the same but slightly increased. We're talking about a move of 250 metres, which, yes, is not as going to be as convenient. And, and that brings you back to the bigger question I answered in response to Councillor Newman, which is the big picture here. Um, this will be a very big redevelopment, and we would be the last to pretend that in its, there's a big package of benefits but it is not going to be perfect. There are going to be impacts uh, of which parking convenience will affect some people. Kate, do you want to just answer the question of the urban design substance behind that statement? You mentioned it before. So this comes to uh, creating that walking environment around um, which uh, shopping centres have by their own nature and that can be created within um, a retail strip of, of shopping as well. Um, so having the, the car parking um, on the gasometer site would create the journey through to Hurstmere Road, um, have people walking around the centre more um, and creates that environment where um, if, if you're on foot you can easily walk into a store and, and do some shopping where if you're in a car uh, you can't. So that's where um, that's where that parking at the <coughs> centre, it leads shoppers to uh, stay longer. They're walking around the centre, enjoying the, enjoying the new environment. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a case Good. of... Um, Do you have another question, Councillor Lee? Yeah, uh, 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 looking at, at things from the other person's perspective. If we own if we owned a, a retail business, we may take... Sorry, Councillor Lee, I, I need you okay. to ans ask um, a question, okay, the next because I did give you some uh, okay. leeway with the former one where you were making a statement, a very long yep. statement. In regard to <laughs> the timeline uh, for this um, uh, sell-off, uh, how much um, are budgetary considerations Inf influencing Panuku. Uh, I, 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 I recall that at our last meeting there was a, a great reluctance to to extend the period of engagement with the with the local board. Because, and I saw some figures about a five percent increase every year we delay. Um, which I'm not sure where they come from, but um, 
how important are your budget commitments to this council or revenue commitments to this council in influencing your approach to this? David? Uh, well, they're significant in the sense that, um, as has come out today, we're using the proceeds of site sales to fund the 25 million car park. Um, they're significant in the sense that there's no way we see the viability to fund two car park structures. Uh, another point to make in relation to your question would be that if you look out at our best projections across the sort of eight to ten year period, um, assuming what we've assumed um, in the plan, Takapuna um, is probably going to produce a very modest surplus from these asset sales compared to what is going to be spent on the car park and the public amenity. So in terms of, um, so perhaps to answer your question directly, we are not being driven by some big asset sales or realisation to go to fund a whole lot of things that the council wants to do somewhere else. Thank you. Could, could, well, I've one more question. Councillor, I've allowed you three questions and I've still got a lot of councillors. Okay. So can I come yeah. back to you if I've got time? Okay. We have Thank got you. time. Councillor Clo, please. How many um, private car park buildings are there in Takapuna at present? And how many car parks do they provide? The only car park building privately um, is at the mall. Um, that has 560 cars. It's owned by the mall, yeah. And have any other developers, um, because they can always sniff out a good deal, come to Panuku to say, look, we think there's a real need in Takapuna for more car parks. We'd like to buy, um, to build a building. Uh, any developers come and put up their hand to Panuku? Um, some private sector investment in building the car park that we, uh, that council are looking to, to build. Um, and for owning and managing of that, but not in, a, in addition to... OK, but that's us paying for the building and them building it. Um, so or, us un, or us or Auckland okay. Transport underwriting the yeah. income, yes. But no one's come to say, we're keen, Panuku, don't worry, or to the local board, don't worry, we, we're going to buy a site and build a building because we can see we can make some money out of this because there's huge demand in Takabuna. Are you aware of any... No. Developers doing that? No. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, Councillor Cooper? Um, I, did have, well, I had two questions, if you'll indulge, Mr Chair. One was, we took, if okay. we get a change of use and if um, land is sold to create um, apartments, you talked about um, the fact that um, you know, access to the local shops. Is it true that there is research that shows that if you have high density near um, lo local shops, those people are more likely to use it because they, they don't need a car to get there, they can actually access that in terms of you know lifting retail involvement and purchasing? Uh, research I've read does say that, yes. Okay, the other question okay. is, um, I mean, the recommendation here is for change of use. That's the essential thing we're trying to do today. So if we've seen a whole lot of fantastic representations here, and they look amazing, and they'll join through to Hurstmere Park as well. If, will any of this be able to happen if we can't get a change of use? No. No. Yeah, no. Sorry, so we can't do anything. <laughs> OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ke uh, Deputy Mayor Cashmore. Thank you, Mr Chair. One very short, quick question. Um, we're getting a lot of new apartments coming into the, into the area, into the CBD of Takapuna, which is a big, beautiful spot with the beach and the lake, stunning. And we, we've seen internationally where you get an uplift in population, you get a change in retail activity from the strip mall type shop, where it's the same shop in every mall, to a more bespoke um, fashion centre, food centric type model. Um, do you have some commentary around that? Because I've seen personal witness that in overseas, but also within New Zealand, where the big box has taken on the strip streets, the old main street, taken retail, but the re retail centre on the old main street has reinvented itself into something newer and better because of repopulation. Well, we've got 
<laughs> Your turn. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, a, 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 absolutely. And, and the, um, retail requires um, uh, people to, to activate, and with a density, and very much the question with uh, Councillor Cooper in regard to people living above or close by shops absolutely, absolutely helps generate changes of uses in regard to strong F&B, and, and, and just there's more bodies there with people that have got disposable incomes that can shop. Yep. That's the answer looking for. Thank you. Councillor Philip Weiner. Yep. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah. Uh, my question's around the consultation. Now, I know there was previous consultation with the previous local board. And on page 79, it's an extensive list of the consultative process <coughs> that you've gone through. And, and, and it's just really want to get your comment around... Um, a member of the local, the current local board in November saying that the process was definitely flawed. Um, can you confirm that uh, the Greater Takapuna Reference Group was established by the previous local board? And there has been, and confirm the list of the consultation on page 79? Yes, so um, it was uh, in October 2015 the um, previous local board resolved to start a reference group. Um, the reference group was uh, a group managed by the local board. The priority was asked for them to focus on the Unlock Takapuna project, um, which we uh, worked in collaboration with the local board to do, to do so. Uh, the list of meetings and um, workshops and items on page 79 all relate to uh, work that we have done with the local board and with the reference group around um, the Unlock Tackapin project. And can I confirm that the membership from the local board, the, the previous local board was the chair at the time, Joe Bergen, um, member Denise Hale, and also the councillor representative was uh, councillor at the time, George Wood? Yes, yes, and then um, member Wood continued membership through the ref rest of the reference group um, following the okay. changes. And, and just again, just, just confirmation that the uh, Greater Takapuna reference group, the stakeholder list, included residents on high-rise buildings, residents single dwelling, uh, youth residents, mid-use arts events, education, finance, technology, health, etc. Yes. Okay, and just one more question through you, Chair. I see on the paragraph uh, 57 um, is that if this doesn't go through, the Unlock Takapuna will not continue. Is, is, is that what I'm, I'm hearing if this doesn't go through today? Yeah, because if you go back to why Takapuna was selected as an unlocked location, which by its very term means a significant uh, urban redevelopment package. Um, the whole rationale was to pick up on years of previous visioning, as Kate shared with you, for a significant mixed-use development on the site. And that's the opportunity to really, um, you know, again, looking back to Councillor Newman's question, this has always been the site, long before Panuku came along, to, to unlock um, a new future for Takapuna um, based on uh, a much stronger centre with a much bigger residential population. So if we don't have a change of use then and it continues as a car park, well, there's not much more we can usefully do at this point. Okay, and just the last it's question. It's not being threatening, that's Sorry, just a statement yeah, and, and of fact. Just Sorry, thank you, David. Sorry to interrupt. No, right. And the last one is, is on the cost that it's taken for us to date. Now, Councillor Lee mentioned um, the figure 400 to, to 500,000. Uh, and I mean, can I confirm that's the cost at the moment uh, as a result of deferring it from November through to March for a decision to, me to be made that the cost to date is between 400 and $500,000? That's an estimated cost from a QS. Um, a quantity surveyor. Um, it's not. It won't be determined until a contract would actually be let and an actual fixed price sum would be agreed on. But that's where the quantity surveying advice has has directed us. Just, just to be just for some Sorry. yeah, just for some clarity on that, because I think there was a bit of the story that councillors didn't hear. So that referred to the 
estimated escalation in the gasometersite car park project because obviously until we have clarified the issue with this site, we can't start building gasometer. Um, because without the change of use, there's no business case rationalisation for the Gasometer Street car park site. So that's just to provide clarity as to what you were asking about, Councillor. Yeah, because uh, I read, sorry, I, I need to clarify, I read here that in relation to the decision being deferred from November 2017, it's in the report, to now is estimated to be in the range of 400 to 500,000. Um, that's what I've read in the report now that's in front of us. So I'm assuming that if it gets deferred again, for a few months that we're looking at possibly in excess of <coughs> another five hundred thousand dollars. So is there well, a, the, the is the risk of additional cost of delay? That's yes. the question. Yeah, because it's building a it's building a twenty five million construction project and we all know what's going on with con construction sector, so prices are not likely to drop in the near future. <laughs> I can Sorry, confirm. Stand. Cast iron guarantee really. <laughs> okay, thank you. Just one quick question of my own what has Panuku expended to date on this part of the process since uh, the planning committee and the board supported the high level project plan? Any estimates? We, we, would, have, we would have a record of that and it's obviously a lot. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, don't have, I don't think any of us have that with us. I should have filed it with you earlier, yeah. but um, yeah. it's, it's a lot. But a lot of staff time and, and um, all the rest of it. But yeah. Yeah. Finally, Councillor Simpson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Look, uh, um, I'm just clarifying a question around uh, the change of use. I've got my parking questions answered, but one of the key stakeholders for the car park is the um, is the market, all right? And I'm, I'm hearing from people who are approaching me that it's an important part. I just want to make sure, um, in fact, I think there was even a petition to save the, the market at, at um, Takapuna. I want to look at um, bullet point one under um, point 59, can you confirm that the market owner operator would be part of that key community organisation that would be part of that conversation about how that public space is shaped? Because I think it would be a shame if we couldn't somehow fit into what we're doing, the retention of that market in Takapuna. Now, if it's not exactly there, maybe it is the car park by the beach or whatever, but I just think that that's an important, uh, I'm hearing that's an important yes. part of the community. So would they be included is that in that, in that <laughs> ongoing as far as the next steps went? Fully intended, but maybe recap again, Yes, Kate. Yes, they would be, and it would probably be worthwhile to note that um, the market, the current market operator was part of the Greater Takapuna Reference Group as well throughout the whole journey, and that was where um, uh, a group recommendation was put forward to the local board, and, and there was a specific um, section there about market. So yes. Oh, fantastic. Mm. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sayers, please. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Darby. It's uh, just probably appropriate time to uh, foreshadow that amendment that I've seconded with uh, Councillor Watson. Okay, that all. so we've, we've uh, had all the questions. We've <coughs> had, um, thank you, Panuku. Uh, thank you, Legal. Um, and I'll just come back to Legal. Christian, there's nothing that precludes us uh, taking a decision on the change of use. This committee can make a decision on the change of use. Thank you. Panuku, anything final to add? No? Okay, so members, we've got a motion that's moved and seconded by the Mayor and Deputy Mayor. And um, then I've got before me a, an amendment. Um, and I gather this is an amendment, how is it? By replacement, is it? Okay. Yeah. What's an amendment? Well, no, there's classifications of amendment. Well, I Addition, think, well, I think replacement. That was what does it say? I think it actually pre predated the actual motion that was moved by the Mayor and Deputy, actually, if we were taking strict time, but I'll leave that to you, Mr. No one ever moved it, and um, still hasn't moved it. So what do I, is it a movement, is it a, a, an amendment by a um, replacement? Yes, is it? it has to be now. Yes, it's, it is. It's yeah. replacing it's now. Yeah. The, so the motion yeah. that's been Looks moved. Like it. Okay, can we, can we type that up, please? Yeah, we have. Be moving it. <coughs> Okay. Do I have it moved? It's moved? Yeah. Thank you. It's moved then. Is it seconded, Councillor Sayers? Thank you. Or <coughs> well, therefore I'll put it. 
I won't be supporting this, but... Um, I'd like to speak to it. Wait, is this the amendment? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'd like to speak to the amendment. OK, thank you. Oh, great, because we were going to put one up, just something we similar. We put one up. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter who puts it up as long as it gets aired. Um, I'm glad you put up this amendment because I would be voting against the proposal today. And it's simply for me about, well, it's not simple, but it's about the role of local boards in this whole process. Um, I'll refer back to Three Kings and something that Grant Gillen said when he was presenting was the plea to look at the, the whole area, not just one little bit of it. And it seems to be we're focusing on one part of it, one little bit. And that's exactly what happened at Three Kings. The plea from the local board was to please look beyond the quarry boundaries, how it interacts with the public space, how it interacts with the civic space. And what did we do? We completely ignored them. We completely ignored up to five or six years of work. So that's still in my mind when I hear the plea from the board. Now, it's a unanimous plea. This is, not, this is a board of many colours, everything from George Wood right out to Grant Gillen. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's, and back it's, again. <laughs> it's a unanimous board of all hues who are coming to say, we are not happy with this. And it was, it's interesting that it should come right at the back of Pan Muir, where everybody is happy, and that's exactly the way we should proceed, when everybody's on the same page. When you have a local board saying no, and I'm still not sure how to proceed, other than to say, we have to do more work on this. And that's what this is allowing. Now, you know, uh, maybe David will say, well, what's the point of that? Because the issue is too hard. We've got Auckland Transport and Panuku saying, no parking here, and we've got the board saying, parking here. Well, is that it? There is no room. If there's no room, just turn it down. And I heard Grant Gillan say he would rather have it turned down than to go ahead with what you're proposing. And there was, there was a piece of paper handed to us, which also rang some bells for me. I don't know whose this is. It's um, Heart of Takapuna. And it was one of the sentences. The process you've been asked to agree to strips all decision-making power away from the Devon, Devonport Takapuna Local Board and the local community. Do you really want to proceed on that basis? Would people think that? Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if it's 1,000, 10,000, 40,000 people, but I certainly know that the local board is not happy and they've made their views known to us today. So it's up to us. We, do we know best? Because I don't know best. That <coughs> responsibility is delegated to local boards. That's what we ask them to do our placemaking because, and, and the woman in here says, we know best. They do know best. So it leaves us with a, it leaves me, I'll speak for me, with a real quandary. We've got the local board firmly rooted in a negative over this small project, which is putting at risk the entire development of Takapuna. And I don't, I don't think it's fair that today we say, actually, we know best and we're, we're, we're stopping it. And, you know, and, and we've got this court case, but I, I don't get, actually, Christopher. Normally, I hear you and I understand. But on the one hand, you're saying the decision today is germane because it effectively stops the sale. But at the same time, you're saying, but you can go ahead and make it. So I don't understand that. And forgive me, I'm not a lawyer. But that, it seems to me that that's at odds. And so I support your recommendation. I thank you for putting the amendment forward. And I think everybody should. We need to tell these people, that, go and find a solution. Go and talk to the local board. And then if you come back and say no, then we're just going to have to vote it down. And we'll move somewhere else and spend <coughs> the money. But give Takapuna another chance. Give the local board another chance. They deserve that. It's their right to do that. So it's the, for me, it's all about the local board and, and, and whether we actually support them or not. I support them. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Watson. Yeah, uh, th thank you, uh, Mr Chair. Um, and uh, uh, um, I think Councillor Casey has made uh, any number of uh, valid points there. Uh, wh one thing I would... I would add, and that was that our previous resolution, which was just taken as recently as November last year, what, what, to defer, was really predicated on the notion that there would be some coming together. That, that was the whole point of it. That's why I assume a lot of people supported it, because they could see a situation where um, the local board uh, and Panuku were, were at odds with each other. We, we're all meant to be... Uh, 
part of the one family, um, <laughs> a, a dysfunctional family sometimes, but a, a one family nonetheless, and that there was an opportunity for, for them to come together in some sort of balance, because it, it's pretty clear to anyone on the outside that a balance has to be struck here between the need to develop in a, in a, in a manner that uh, meets Panuku's needs, the preservation of, of open space, and the need for adequate car parking to, to, to meet the needs of the businesses and, and the residents. Um, the open space component, uh, after the Mayor's questioning, seems to be um, a little bit more hopeful. 3,000 square metres out of 8,000 square metres seems, um, s seems reasonable and, and, and that could work. Um, obviously, for such a prime location, the, um, any development aspect is going to, I would have thought, would be quite attractive to developers. This is an incredibly significant site, and I, and I think this behoves us to, to be very careful here. If you look at any of those maps or visuals, this is an incredibly st strategic site for the future of Takapa Takapuna going 30, 40, 50 years and beyond. So you want to get it right. You don't want to make uh, a mistake here. And clearly, clearly, the, the, the central party that, that must be carried along here is the local board, who we have heard are carrying the views of their community, whether it's the ordinary residents uh, in Takapuna and beyond, and the business community. So there's a, a, a very unusual unanimity of view here, uh, as Councillor Casey says, that, that goes right across the spectrum, not, not just politically, but within um, the local population. So um, it's, it's not really appropriate in those circumstances, one would have thought, just to dismiss that view. And that's really the alternative that's being put up here is, uh, we know best, yes, we've heard you, we've, we've heard you say that, you know, there's, there's faulty information, we've heard you say that nearly everyone agrees on uh, a number of factors here, we've heard all that, but hey guys, we know best. Uh, that's not really a satisfactory way to proceed with the council family, not unless you want to, to drive the division here. And as we know in Takapuna with the beachfront uh, caravan park shambles, Mm. Uh, this has a potential to, to actually uh, backfire big time and we can get caught up in all manner of uh, uh, legal um, challenges at, but, but more importantly a total lo loss of confidence and trust. That's what we're facing to here today is confidence and trust. And I'm sorry to say that I can actually identify with some of the issues to do with confidence and trust. They're, 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 they're not... Um, fictional. There, there are issues here. Now, I think the way to proceed in those circumstances is to, is to give them an opportunity, rather than to say yes or no today, and either way, uh, you, you're going to be either for the local board, the local community, the local businesses, or you're going to be for Panuku's view of things, because that's the way that plays out. I think there is an opportunity here to to defer and to say, well, that balance has to be struck, Mr Chair. That balance has to be struck. It's an invidious position for councillors to be put in today, but it is that, that choice you're going to make. Uh, and I know my choice is going to, <coughs> to go with the local board, the local community, the local business, and a long-term view that works for Takapuna. Councillor Wayne Walker. I want to um, speak in support of deferring this, this, this matter. And frankly, uh, I'm aghast that this group of people would take on the local board, the business people, and the community who are all in alignment. Frankly, I haven't had good answers to my questions. The real concern going forward around um, parking is, is sure the parking requirement for the businesses, but also the parking requirement for the immense number of apartment dwellers for whom there will probably be little, if any, on-site parking because of the unitary plan. I didn't get an answer to that. I did not get an answer to that. <coughs> 
and I'd suggest that sort of information would help to inform our decision. I do not believe that I've had an adequate answer to the options that have been put forward by the local board and the community around, let's say, a four-level parking building on the ANZAC site with the use of airspace and apartments above. I don't think there's been <coughs> adequate consideration given to that, certainly not from other people that I've spoken to. And I am very much concerned around the lack of trust that I see growing within <coughs> the Auckland community at large over this issue and any number of issues, especially those that go to the viability of local businesses, many of which are going under going bankrupt, going out of business, with the because against with a background the where they've got the provision of parking in malls and the decline of parking across the Auckland Council, the Panuku <coughs> and the <coughs> Auckland Transport Space, and they are the entities that increasingly are running our operation, they go to the wall. And I would suggest that that may well be the circumstance here if we go along with what Panuku wants. So, yes, I think we should defer our decision. I don't think there's any immediacy here. This is an incredibly special and precious piece of land that the business people have paid for. We don't need to make this decision right now until we've got more information. Councillor Newman. Just to Point just of order, Mr Chairman. Three, are you going to oh, use... Oh, excuse me, Councillor Newman, I'll just take the point of order. <coughs> Councillor Cooper. Are you going to use your um, right to limit yes. the debate to three, four and three against? No, I'm going to be very democratic <laughs> and I'm going to take Councillor Good Newman. on you. Well, I'm, I'm not sure, Chair, just before I begin, can you just clarify, so this is the, this is the replacement, this is now the substitute. Correct. Yes, yep. Okay, if this if this is defeated, is there going to be a subsequent debate on the on the recommendations? The, the, the the, you go back to the original motion. Okay, yes. all right. Well, I'm, I'm not. Well, I don't support the, um, the the principle of of cars being taken off the site, but I certainly don't think that we should use the argument of legal proceedings to defer a decision for that. So I won't be supporting the amendment, but I do want to comment on the substantive item. Thank you. Councillor Lee? Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I support the amendment. This matter um, has become uh, very divisive um, within the Takapuna community, though the overwhelming majority um, support the position of their local board, but it's also becoming divisive within this council. We all have a role to play in, in the super city. The governing body, Panuku, Auckland Transport, the local board, and we should be playing as a team. But what we are seeing here, the, the people who are expert, if you like, the people who are closest to the local community, the very foundation, um, if you will, of, of this council, the local board, its opinions are, are, are being ignored. Um, I don't think that's particularly healthy. Um, we run the risk of creating a, another grievance, like the uh, Takapuna Motor Camp um, affair, and to have Waiheke alienated and North Rodney alienated may be one thing, Councillor, but to have there? Takapuna Councillor, alienated... I, I just need to intervene. Members, the only person that has spoken to the motion has actually been Councillor Newman. The, the motion actually... I'm building up to it, Mr Chairman. <laughs> ...for legal proceedings. I'm building up to it. I support the motion because... This decision is absolutely germane and critical to the sale of that car park. There are proceedings before the High Court. Judicial, uh, a judicial review uh, aimed to prevent that happening. And so we, uh, rather than uh, standing by um, and waiting for judgment, we are uh, bulldozing ahead. Um, it's one thing 
to be uh, disrespectful to the local board, which I believe we are, in ignoring their, their, their submissions. It's uh, uh, one thing to be disrespectful to the local community or their uh, community groups, and we are because we can't even hear what they have to say. We can't even hear their voice. <clears throat> but it's another thing, I would say, to be disrespectful to the High Court. And so uh, uh, a precautionary approach and a sensible approach, Mr Chairman, would not be to roll the dice today, <clears throat> but take um, this amendment as a good way out for some further thought. We have, um, Councillor Casey and myself, have also an amendment tabled with you, which calls upon the parties to return to the table to reach accord in the long-term interests of Takapuna. This cannot be a zero-sum game, uh, winner takes all, because the winner will turn out to be a loser in the long run. The whole coming back to the broader picture, this plan is flawed because parking is critical and parking also relates to transport <coughs> and there is no mass transit or mass transport solution in this future vision that I can see. We have to remember when we're talking about making things pedestrian free that pedestrians are people with a brain and with a heart and a mind and aspirations of their own. They have their own, they have their own desire and their own political will in regard to what happens to their area, to their takapuna. They're not just pedestrians, they are people. And it's time um, Auckland Transport, Auckland Council and even Pānuku understood that. I'll leave it at that. I support the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Councillor, uh, sorry, Mayor Gott. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. I'm opposed to the motion because we have been informed very clearly that legal proceedings have nothing to do with the decision we are about to take today. There is no legal advisor on our council that would agree with Councillor Lee's comment that taking a decision today would be disrespectful to the High Court. I'm very respectful of our judicial system, but the legal advice to us could not be clearer. This decision is not pertinent to the proceedings before the court it is. today. Of course it is. Uh, now, Councillor, uh, uh, speaking of being respectful, I was respectful when you expressed your opinion. Could you please accord the same respect to me? The second thing is we heard also that we don't, from, from our legal advisor at the end of the table, that we don't know when those legal proceedings might take place. And what we are doing if we pass this recommendation is creating a very clear incentive to keep dragging out the legal proceedings. Let's have the courage to actually make a decision today. This is now in the third year of deliberation. The third year of deliberation. And we have had 25 meetings involving consultation. It's set out in Appendix C. We can keep talking forever, but there's only a point if you think that you can reach a resolution at the end of it. My first instinct in this is to say, look, if the local board continues after we make the decision that is required for Panuku to take this any further, we say no today, they've said, well, we're out of here, we've got lots of other things to do. I respect that view. That's not a threat. It's just... You know, I've heard councillors around this table say, what about an unlock for us in our area? Mm. We want one here. Okay. If Takapuna doesn't want it, mm. well, forget it. We'll, we'll spend our money somewhere else. Okay. But let's make okay. a decision today. Let's not have a phony amendment that talks about leaving it for some time if we're not intending ever to do it. Let's just take the decision that we need to take today. If Panuku goes ahead, draws up the plans, and the local board and the community the community, even more importantly than the local board, says, we don't want a bar of this. I'll get the message and I'll say, we won't put any further money in it. We're out of here. But let's not use this as an excuse simply to keep deferring, keep putting it off. We look like a body of people incapable of making a decision, and we need to be a body of people capable of making a decision.
Thank Even you, Mayor Goff, for echo those Got thoughts, and we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour say aye. I had, no, I had no. wanted to speak. You want to speak, um, Councillor Clough? I didn't yes, see I your did signal. Councillor Clough. I was down there. Um, I, I just really want to endorse what Councillor Newman said and, and, and Mayor Goff, possibly not quite as forcefully as Mayor Goff. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're really you, making a really bad precedent. I mean, let's say we're going to do light rail to the airport and then someone puts some sort of injunction or some sort of court action and then we sit around and say, oh, well, let's wait for about 10 years for it. You know, I mean really bad precedent and I think it's actually poor form and I think it's actually shows that we're pretty weak in our decision making. I want to make one point though because I've heard the first three speakers, Councillor Casey, she may not have said it but certainly Councillor Watson did and Councillor Walker, that how the business community are really don't want this to go ahead. Let us be quite clear, I sat on the hearings with Councillor Stewart and Councillor Cooper and while all the a good number of people come, oh it's going to kill the business, it's going to kill the business. Then we have the Takapuna Beach Business Association come and say, we're right behind this. We're right behind this. We want this to happen. I'm reading a message we all got yesterday. Takapuna Business Association. We are still behind this redevelopment. And make sure you keep investigating the short stay parking. So let no one please make that false statement, because it's not anywhere in there, that the business community, just because Grant might have said it, and the local board, that is not true. The Takabuna Beach Business Association are totally behind this development. Mm -hmm. And I just want that point, I will not be supporting this amendment. Thank you, members. We've, we've had um, speakers for and against uh, pretty equal. Um, I don't have a closure motion, and I now have... Motion. Councillor motion. Sayers, do you want to say something too? No, well, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Mainly pro probably as the seconder to the motion, so thank you for that opportunity. Thank you. I know, and then I'll, I'll put the vote. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Look, um, I, think, I thank the local board, but I also want to thank uh, um, you, Mr Rankin, and your team for coming along and presenting today, because, uh, and the legal team as well, because it is, it is, there is, as you said, the big picture to be looking at here. There's... Uh, very, very important drivers for us to uh, be driving revitalisation throughout Auckland, and we need to be able to fund those some way as well. So uh, listen very, very carefully to that, and I, and I just want to thank you for that, because you, you do have your objectives to reach. We as Auckland councillors, um, we, we, you know, we've got those objectives to meet as well. Um, but I think there's an even bigger picture, and it's been alluded to, uh, Mr Chair, and that's, there is a big picture around the revitalisation, but there's a bigger picture around Aucklanders' perceptions of Auckland Council's decision making and their trust and confidence levels in that. And I've just heard the Mayor speak about how we need to lead, how we need to make wise decisions, how we need to be able to see, make decisions, we mustn't put up phony amendments. Mm -hmm. Mm. But I think we need to be very careful mm. in here, and here is the judgment call that we have to make in a few moments' time. Uh, and uh, it's a, perhaps a conscious vote for each councillor more than anything else, because either we drive past the will, like a bulldozer, uh, of the local board's will, we drive through what we've heard from the, from the community's concerns, we bulldoze through what we've heard about business concerns, we either do that or we weigh that up against the risks of perhaps pausing, giving time for a regrouping so that when Panuku and the local board represent to us, we get a much more uh, higher level of confidence that we can make a decision where Aucklanders aren't going to react on the North Shore in a PR disaster, uh, as has also been alluded to by some of the other councillors. So look, my, my plea in this debate is to support this amendment for nothing else perhaps than to uh, give us breathing time to go back to the table to regroup on this because otherwise I'm afraid that the fallout from this will not uh, be good for Auckland Council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chair. I'll put the motion then. All division. 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 Take the division, please. Okay, so this is a division on the amendment moved by Councillor Watson and seconded by Councillor Sayers. Councillor Darby. Against. Councillor Bartley. Against. Councillor Casey. Yes. Deputy Mayor. No. Councillor Clough. No. 
Councillor Collins. Against. Councillor Cooper. Against. Councillor Filipina. Against. Mia Goff. Against. Member Henare. No. Councillor Hulse. No. Councillor Mike Lee. Aye. Councillor Newman. Against. Member Taipiri. No. Councillor Quacks. Uh, yes. Councillor Sayers. <coughs> Four. Councillor Simpson. No. Councillor Stewart. Four. Councillor Sir John Walker. No. Councillor Wayne Walker. Yes. Councillor Watson. Yes. Thank you. Declare that lost. Seven votes to 14. Go back to the substantive motion. Are there further speakers on the substantive motion? Councillor Hulse. Thank you, Mr Chair. I've stayed out of the debate, but I just want to have a chance to make a quick comment. There's been a lot of talk about trust and confidence, and I think this council's working very hard to build trust and confidence out there. Amongst wider Auckland and New Zealand Inc., trust and confidence is actually built when you make decisions well reasoned and well thought through and well considered. And, you know, we, those of us who marched in the Pride Parade, marched with T-shirts on saying we build this city. This is about building Auckland. You know, we're out there talking about revitalising our town centres, unlocking the potential, and what's more, building a city that deals to, you know, its carbon footprint. And I'm quite stunned that this argument actually turns on car parking. I'm sorry, I'm quite staggered by that. I've read the reports, I know the area well, and I'm very, very supportive of what's being proposed. It's doing exactly what it says. It's unlocking this potential of this remarkable area. And to be quite honest, trust and confidence drains away when we prevaricate and we make up excuses to avoid making decisions and we turn ourselves inside out trying to avoid making a decision. That doesn't build trust and confidence. We're out there trying to build and support the government building thousands and thousands of houses. How will developers and backers feel when they watch this council yet again turn on itself and be too scared to make a decision that we've been putting off for, as the Mayor says, quite rightly, three years? I think it's an excellent proposal. I think it's exactly the right thing to do for Takapuna, and I think if we're going to build trust and confidence in this council, we need to do exactly what the Mayor says, stand by what we've said we're going to do, and get on and do it, and stop going round and round in circles. Finally, Mr Chair, I, I do not want to be seen as unsupportive of the local board, but at some stage the local board needs to understand that these are regional decisions and, is, and decisions that this council has to take. Respectfully, it's now our time to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hulse. Councillor Newman? Yeah, um, look, Mr Rankin um, brought it back to, it's a fundamental debate about whether you support the principle of redevelopment of the site. Um, and inherent to that, it seems to me, the future of the car at 40 Anzac Street. And the answer for me actually is fundamentally I still see a role for the car at the site, which means that, um, you know, I, I have to be against the recommendation of the hearing panel because that, that is the nub of the question here. So I find myself in disagreement with, with B and probably with C and E and would need the, I'd like those to be re recorded, um, Chair. I mean, look, I look at, um, you know, I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to really know uh, exactly what the site will look like in the future as to weigh up whether, you, whether you're for or against that, um, because a lot is unknown here. Um, I look at Garden Place, a great big, um, it's a redeveloped location in central Hamilton where there are no cars, uh, where there is a uh, open space and there's private departments and there's retail around there. And frankly, I don't think much of it. I don't think Garden Space, uh, Garden Place in Hamilton is the is the optimal location. Uh, probably my favourite location in Europe, um, Mr. Chair, was the town of Ypres in, in Belgium. We're right in the middle of the of the of the town square. Is actually a great big um, ground level car park. Um, and it wasn't the cars that, ma that make the site good, it's the fact that, that people come in and out of there, whether they're walking or, 
or using public transport or private motor vehicle. Um, the site does not uh, live or die on the on whether you can get rid of car parks. Actually, I think there's so much more to it. So I'm not I'm not of a mind to just um, wipe out these car parks um, at ground level at the site uh, for those reasons. Um, Chair, I do think that there is uh, a concern about the impact of um, short stay car park, public car parking and surrounding streets. I have listened to the chair of the local board. I'm not comfortable about the impact uh, of um, the removal of these car parks at these locations. Mr Rankin tried to to give an assurance that the impact was, was comparatively modest. I think it's a bit more than that. Uh, with respect to reliance on the open space provision policy, um, there is, you know, the open space provision policy does reflect about um, minimum um, s square metre for civic space. I'm not sure that the minimum amount as set out in that policy uh, is sufficient for me to have comfort around E. Uh, and so, you know, Chair, I don't, you know, I don't want to introduce a debate about whether unlock finishes here. We could look at somewhere else because I've got some ideas about that. <laughs> but what I will say is that um, it comes down to a point of making a decision, and on that question, um, I'm not supportive. So I would want uh, my vote on B and C and E reflected accordingly, if that's okay. Thank you, Councillor Clo. I found the comment that Kate made about from the gasometer to, sorry, the other car park, the name I forget, right at the other end, being lesser and shorter in distance than Sylvia Park. I found that really quite telling. Now, okay, you'd have to you'd have to have an umbrella occasionally. I mean, that's that's the the basis in Takapuna. But the bottom line is we've got malls that are bigger than this. The extremities of where we're talking about there, um, and people. Glad you walk around, and indeed they're popular places and the destination places. I'm one of the strongest supporters in this council for brownfield developments. I'm one of the strongest supporters in this council for the Panuku, for, for us forming Panuku and giving Panuku the objectives we're setting out. And I'll be fighting like hell in the LTP to make sure Panuku, I'll be doing my best to ensure Panuku get the support they need in order to do the developments because I'm cynical and skeptical about the cost of greenfield developments. I'll be quite open about that, but I know I'm not alone. Just to reiterate, I'm not going to reiterate, I should say, uh, what, what uh, Councillor Hull said, but this is, a, this is a regional issue. We've just got to make the decisions. Takapuna has got the potential to be among the most beautiful of our Mm -hmm. Brownfield developments, exactly. the most beautiful. Yeah. I'm in New Lynn, but it ain't Takapuna. I don't want people from New Lynn to be saying that, but the bottom line, it ain't Takapuna. It's got the potential to just be a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place to live there. Now you wander around and you can see the, the apartment buildings that are going up in there because you've got the beach, you've got the lake, but you've just got a fantastic environment there. Oh, I notice <laughs> people that... People around here who are opposed to this, I've got a lot of respect for it, and I see a number of them that are in many ways our strongest supporters of public transport, and yet they're just continually coming out with arguments about car parks. And I just don't know how they blend and match when we're trying to intensify. You've got to go one way or the other to a degree, and I suppose I would hate to see Takapuna miss out on this. I think if we do not move ahead with this and Panuku decide to put their resources and, and, and attention into other areas and Takapuna is neglected for another decade, 15 years, 20 years, I actually think the local Takapuna community will be lamenting that decision, mm. long lamenting that decision because Panuku's patience and our patience will be that we move on because we know there are other areas that would love to be elevated up to be in, lot, in the unlock category or into the transform category. So I'll be supporting all of these um, resolutions. Thank you, Councillor. And uh, Mayor Goff, please. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, look, 
I, I think we need to take the proposal forward. And if at the end of taking this proposal forward, when you've created some clear outlines of what it might look like, that one, it does not reduce the amount of car parking, but it relocates it. Yes, slightly less conveniently, but it's still there. Secondly, <clears throat> that you create a beautiful square. A square can be the heart of the city. In Ypres or in Brussels or anywhere in Europe, the square is the heart of the city. Mm. But a car park is not the heart of a city. A car park is just that. It's a place where you park cars. We know that we probably have to move the War Memorial over in Takapuna. Would anybody really here suggest that we should put the War Memorial in the car park? Would you really do that? Or would you say, no, let's call this Anzac Square. Let's honour the memory of the people from the shore. Jack Lyon, the MP for the shore, was one of them who died for his country. Let's put that in the heart of the square, and the square is the heart of Takapuna. If at the end of creating the model for what can be a vibrant heart of Takapuna with renewal, with more, in, more intensive housing that is high quality housing that will contribute, as the Deputy Mayor said, to the business community and the nature of things, having Potter's Park as something that is used to the utmost because it's a beautiful and great place to go, if having spelt it all out to the public and the community of Takapuna says we want none of it, then at that stage I'd say, well, let's forget it. We're not here to bulldoze something through that people don't want, but at the moment I'm not sure people know what the option is, which is why I asked the question about the square. When I read this document from the heart of Takapuna, and I thought the square was going to be this miserable little green patch here, I thought, maybe this isn't a good idea. But if well over a third of this area is going to be a beautiful public realm and surrounded by upgraded buildings and more vibrant businesses and pedestrian friendly where you can get around, then I think people in the local community will say, this is what we want. But if we make the decision today not to accept the recommendations of the hearing panel that adopts some of those requirements, the town square, the short state public parking, the gasometer car park being done first, engagement of the board and the community in the design of this. If we don't vote for it today, it's dead. As far as I'm concerned, leave it behind us and let's move on to somewhere where we want it. Mm. That's, that's my decision. So if you vote against it today, it, you know, we might as well just give up on it. Three years, is three years long enough to make a decision? I think it's long enough to make a decision. 25 meetings, is that long enough? It, that's not even the end of it, actually. This recommendation talks about the involvement of the local board, and you have to respect the local board. They're elected to represent the community. Even more, you've got to respect the local community. So there will be engagement. They will decide what this place looks like. But let's not just prevaricate, prevaricate, delay, and look indecisive. Let's make a decision to proceed with this. If at the end of the day the model is not what the community wants, let's walk away from it. And that's why I'm supporting these recommendations today. Thank you, Mayor Goff. <coughs> and um, Councillor Watson, please. Uh, th thank you, Mr Chair. And, uh, and I'm sure the, the good people of Takapuna will be uh, greatly hardened, heartened by the news that Takapuna has a potential to be a, a, a wonderful place to live. That, that, that'll really give you something to hold on to. Because for us who have lived on the North Shore since 1961, Takapuna already is a beautiful place. It always has been a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. That's why people feel so passionately about it. They don't want it to be short change. They don't want it to have development. They don't want it to have short-sightedness uh, that has characterised the planning to date. Um, and in that respect, it's, it's more than just a little amusing to sit around and listen to the, the bold decision makers who are carrying Auckland City forward into the, the 21st century. The same decision makers in a number of respects are responsible for our 15% our uh, confidence in our decision making. <laughs> it's, it, 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 sorry, it, it's maybe climbed to 17% in this new thing, uh, barely above the margin of error, I would have thought. What we're seeing, witnessing happening here today is, is not 
uh, phony amendments or people looking to prevaricate, what we're witnessing amongst some councillors anyway is a willingness to listen to the local board and the local community who have spoken with near unanimity on this. Uh, to do otherwise displays quite a startling arrogance in my view, and we've witnessed that already. In fact, it bears more resemblance to the, the charge of the Light Brigade, because that's what you're doing. Into the valley of death you're, ch you're charging here in terms of the people of Takapuna and the wider North Shore. That's, that's the decision making we're seeing today. Blinkered, uh, panic stricken, uh, and, and, and adhering to, to big booming voices giving orders from behind the scenes. That is not the way that this issue should be getting dealt with. No one wants the car park at Anzac Ave to, to sit around in its present state for the next 40, 50 years. They said that. We're listening. They don't, they don't want they, they, they want a better outcome than that. What they don't want is an outcome that isn't good but is made by virtue of our decision here today because they don't have confidence in the people who are driving this. Were you listening to them? They do not have confidence in them. So who are you going to listen to? The big booming voices, the CCO, like or the know. people who are elected to represent the people in Takapuna and Devonport? Which one are you going to vote for? You get a chance to do that in about a, a couple of minutes. Thank you, Councillor Watson. Now, members, we've, we've had a number, a very good range of debate here on both sides, and I have been asked to put the motion. Are there, uh, I, have we canvassed this well? Yeah, yes. um, <coughs> No, I've, I've, I've been prompted by a couple of members uh, that if three and three have spoken on either side to put the motion, um, and I'd like now to, to do that. By division. I will take it by division. Can we take A can we take A on voices members? If you look at A? Yes. Yep. Councillor Casey, do you want division on A as well? No. Uh, no. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Can we take A on voices? All those in favour say aye. 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 Contrary no, declare that carried. And we'll take B through to I think it's G, isn't it? Yep. B to B, B to G uh, by division and we'll call that. Right, so the division is on clauses B through to G. Councillor Darby? Four. Councillor Bartley? Four. Councillor Casey? No. Deputy Mayor? Yes. Councillor Clough? Yes. Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Cooper? Four. Councillor Filipina? Aye. Mayor Goff? Four. Member Henry? Yes. Councillor Hulse? Aye. Councillor Lee? No. Councillor Newman? No. Member Taipere? Four. Councillor Quacks? No. Councillor Sayers? No. Councillor Simpson? Four, but I did have a good speech, so I wouldn't, didn't get a chance to say. Crimes on your birthday, oh, that's pretty oh, unfair. No. <laughs> Councillor <laughs> Stewart? No. Councillor Sir John Walker? Four. Councillor Wayne Walker? No. Councillor Watson? Against. Thank you. Thank you, members. Uh, declare the motions B through to G carried uh, 13 votes to 8. Uh, we will now adjourn for lunch and we will come back at 2.30. Thank you, members.